So I decided to do my TED Talk on a new computer that was developed by a British company that wanted to help uh, bring the availability of computers to third world countries, developing nations, and lower income families. And what they uh, developed was this small uh, motherboard. It's an all-in-one computer. I actually got it as my Christmas present. Uh, it costs about 30 to 40 bucks, so it's really cheap and it's really fun to play with. Uh, the hard drive is actually a uh, SD card, which I uh, uh, actually stole from my dad's camera. So, and uh, so you can actually run a bunch of operating systems off this. Uh, anything that's Unix-based, which is Windows or Linux. So I did not have the time to install Windows on this, but I did install uh, a Debian Linux thing. So, uh, and it uh, has a uh, HDMI and a VGA, or not VGA, uh, DV, HDMI and compars, uh, composite RCA cable. And that means it can hook up to any analog or digital uh, digital uh, monitor. So pretty much any uh, monitor from the past 25 years, whether it's an old CRT TV or a new nice like 4K monitor, it should be able to hook up to that fine. Uh, so, and the power source is any uh, 700 milliamp five volt power source. So you can plug it into a wall outlet, or you could actually have a uh, small battery. Doesn't start. Well, no. uh, one second. Actually, uh, just playing around with this uh, last period, and I found a way to actually have it work with my phone. So uh, I can actually use the power source on my phone as the uh, source. It, since most phones, this is pretty much the inside of your phone, but slightly different. It doesn't have the display, it's pretty much the raw components that uh, you interface with it. So if I plug in this cable, which is a micro USB to a USB, and then take this over here, I should be able to get it from the... Oh, there it is. Oh. This is just a. This is a special version of Linux called Raspbian, which is a Debian uh, based. It's based off Debian, which is a very popular Linux distro. And <coughs> it's going to take a few minutes to boot all the way up, but when it's done, that's uh, my phone. Actually, give me a command line prompt, which is the pretty much the standard interface with Linux. Or so I have to log in. The username is defaulted to Pi. Actually, set the password last night. So, give it a few seconds. And now I'm logged in. This is the standard interface. So I could do IWconfig, give me a bunch of information. I'm not connected to a network right now. So, to get a GUI interface, which is the standard interface that most of you are feel, uh, familiar, with, uh, familiar with, I just have to do start X, and I'll run a little script. And it boots up into a standard interface that most of you know and love. Mm. Of course, uh, it also has an Ethernet jack on it, which will allow uh, people to uh, hook it up with an Ethernet cord, uh, any wireless uh, drivers things, like uh, the keyboard and mouse that I'm using right now is actually, I just took this from the back of the computer over there, so that's why I'm able to use this right now. And Linux is pretty good with this, uh, supporting drivers. Although, you don't have to use Linux with this. Uh, you could uh, load Windows up there, but I was limited to the size of the SD card I could find. Uh, give it a second for the thing to load back up. So, just a little proof that it can actually do something. Uh, I can actually play, where is it? Tetris. <laughs> So, give it a second to boot up. Well, while well, 
that's booting up. Uh, it's actually a pretty powerful computer. It has a, uh, I think it's an 800 mil, uh, uh, megahertz processor, which is pretty low by what standard computers use today. But it is a, it's powerful enough. It's like the equivalent of most smart uh, smartphone processors. Uh, it has a built-in uh, graphics board, which is why I'm able to run it off the computer. So uh, it supports, uh, it has an audio jack with a 3.5 uh, millimeter jack, so in and out uh, with headphones if you have them, or stereo speakers. And so all that makes it a really universal, versatile, easily used computer anywhere. So for 30 or 40 bucks, you can pick up one of these and uh, do a bunch of learning projects or give it to a someone in a developing country to help learn about computers. Uh, on a uh, visit to Yukon, I actually took a tour on the, uh, of the, uh, uh, they had a tour for the uh, engineering and computer science. Uh, their computer engineering and computer science tour, it was like a joint thing. And the, one of the professors actually had a setup. It was using a Raspberry Pi and a microcontroller. And a microcontroller is just a, uh, pretty much something that will help distribute the signal. But uh, so pretty much he was using the Raspberry Pi to run a Linux web server, which uh, allowed you to access it wirelessly. And from there, he used the Raspberry Pi as a, with the microcontroller to actually hook up to a lamp so he could wirelessly from his iPhone turn the lamp on his desk on and off. <laughs> so just as a computer, it's a great, but from that, it also uh, <coughs> it also uh, prevents a lot of uh, cool project ideas. So you could put that at the center of a robot, have it running a script for automation or uh, wireless controls for your garage or a lamp on your desk, or <laughs> pretty much anything you could think of with a computer. Uh, the Raspberry Pi can act as that. So it's really neat and a really fun tool if you're learning or trying to do projects or even an advanced user. So it's a really, really cool thing, and I think anyone who's thinking about learning about computers, wants to understand more about Linux, or just wants to have fun playing with a project or just learn something more, should definitely buy one because they're incredibly cheap. And yeah, so. Great you. job.